I'm not live. Hey, good morning. It's Diana here with Tap Till Greenway. Get my screen to read correctly. Oh, hey there. Good morning. Um, I need to get my screen to flip around. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I do want to start reading the story. I'm going to wait just a minute and see if anyone else joins us. And so I get my story, um, flip the screen so that my, it's not reading backwards for you guys. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not seeing the little screen for that. Nope, not that. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I'll just wait here just another minute. Hopefully I can get this figured out right quick. Do, do, do. Okay. Hi. Um, okay, so there's supposed to be a little um, icon down here to flip the screen so that everything behind me or so that this reads you're seeing it backwards and I need it to flip so <laughs> do you know how to do that I can't find the the little um, icon that you're supposed to do that with not that one okay This is rather irritating. Sorry about this. Um, give me one second. Okay, I don't want it to read all backwards to you or to all the words to show backwards. It's kind of um, not so fun. Okay, getting my someone to help me real quick. Come here. <laughs> okay. The screen flip is not on there. How am I supposed to do this? No, it's supposed to be on there. That's what all the things I've seen have shown me, so that this is will show correctly. I know, I'm just scanning. Oh, that was fun. Nope, nope that goes, yeah, that's <laughs> behind the camera. Um, okay, this is really, hmm? I know, I'm already on. I've got one person who's watching me be really embarrassing to do this. <laughs> um, I suppose I could just read it and show the pictures. Yeah, How about we do that? I'll read it and just show the picture part so you don't have the words all backwards and they'll be kind of irritating. So I'll just watch where I hold it up. So I think this will work. How about that? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start reading um, Wonders of the Pond. And this was written by Francine Sabin and illustrated by Lee Grant. And with this book, I will have, um, I'll have it posted with the title and the author um, afterwards up on our website or in a link to um, where you can get it, probably through Amazon. Um, Okay, let me try to keep just the pictures on here. Okay, it's a warm summer day. A gentle breeze moves through the trees. It makes small ripples across the pond. A bullfrog sunning itself on a lily pad croaks a loud song. This is the world of the pond where many special plants and animals make their homes. A 
A family of ducks waddles into the water. The mother leads four ducklings in a line close to the shore. All at once, the mother tips forward. Only her tail shows above the water. Right here. The mother duck eats weeds that grow in the water. These green plants are called pondweed. Tiny fish and snails hide in the pondweed. It shelters them from big fish, ducks, and other hunters. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Some fish swim along the muddy floor of the pond. Oops, sorry. Um, hunting for food. They are called bottom feeders. One kind of bottom feeder is the sucker. The sucker's mouth is at the lower part of its face. The sucker feeds by taking in tiny plants and animals, which are in the mud at the bottom of the pond. You can see his little mouth right here. Hi, good morning, Whitney. Thanks for joining. And here we go. The bottom of a pond is a very busy place. Many things grow and live there. Ponds grow in every part of plants. Sorry, plants grow in every part of the pond. That is because a pond is not very deep. Sunlight can touch every part of the pond from top to bottom. Plants need the sunlight to grow. Ooh, here's a really cool picture. Every plant and animal plays an important part in the life of the pond. Even after a plant dies, it is used. It breaks down and makes the mud into good soil where more plants will grow. Dead plants are also uh, food for tiny living things in the water. One of these tiny animals is the amoeba. This one's a little tricky because I've got wording on both sides. An amoeba is so small it can only be seen under a microscope. It can have any shape. The amoeba can stretch out long and thin or it can curl up into a round blob. There are other animals the size of an amoeba in the pond. They're paramecium. That's a big word, I know, paramecium is one kind. It looks like a shoe with little hairs all over it and it swims by waving those hairs. Let's see if I can just show you that without seeing the words. See that one? And these are all the little hairs right here. There are tiny living things in the pond that are not animals. They are plants called algae. Under the microscope, they look like strings of beads, needles, flowers, and many other things. Oops, wrong guy, sorry. <laughs> the tiny plants and animals in the pond are food for bigger animals such as water mites. Water mites look like their cousins, the land spiders. Water mites breathe air, but they can stay underwater for as long as an hour. Many water mites are eaten by fish that live in the pond. Okay, ooh, this one's pretty cool. Worms are also part of the pond. There are flat worms that slide along the muddy bottom, and there are round worms, worms that move by whipping themselves back and forth in the water. Many insects live near the pond too. Mosquitoes lay their eggs at the edge of the water. The tiny eggs are laid early in the spring and hatch when the weather is warm. When they hatch, they look like little worms floating on the top of the water. A mosquito changes many times before it's fully grown, a fully grown insect with wings. You can see the stages here, the eggs, and then growing up into an adult mosquito.
The dragonfly is a very beautiful pond insect. It has a long, narrow body and four thin wings. Dragonflies come in many colors and they are large insects. A dragonfly can be almost four inches or 10 centimeters wide from wing tip to wing tip. From here to here. Let me give like a full picture here. Him with the flowers. Here we go. Okay. Dragonfly eggs are laid on the pond water or on the plants that grow in the pond. They hatch into little insects called nymphs. These nymphs look like very small beetles. Dragonfly nymphs live at the bottom of the pond for a year or longer. When nymphs are ready to become dragonflies, they climb up on a plant to the air. Once the nymph is out of the water, its skin splits open. Out comes a dragonfly. It spreads its wings and flies away. Not too quickly, actually. I've seen this happen, which is amazing to watch. And they do have to dry out before they can fly away. There are hundreds of different kinds of insects at the pond. Water striders seem to skate over the top of the pond. Back swimmers, shaped like a boat, move around with legs like paddles. And there are flies, beetles, moths, plus many more. Where the pond is shallow, shrimp and crayfish live. To swim, the shrimp turn onto their sides and wave their legs. Crayfish look like small lobsters. Their shells are grayish brown and hard. The crayfish have, has five pairs of legs. The pair in front are the claws used to catch and hold small fish, insects, or plants. Snapping turtles are the biggest animals in the pond. They can grow up to 2 feet or 60 centimeters long and weigh more than 40 pounds or 18 kilometer, kilograms. Excuse me. Snapping turtles spend the winter in the mud at the bottom of the pond. In spring, they come out and dig a hole in the ground near the pond. This is where they lay their eggs. The eggs hatch into tiny turtles in about three months. There is a creature of the pond that looks like a very small dinosaur. It's the salamander. Can you see him in here? It's right up here. Salamanders can be black with yellow marks, brown with blue spots, or bright red with black spots. Some salamanders do not have lungs. They breathe through their skin. But they must keep their skin wet to be able to breathe and stay alive. All salamanders eat worms and insects and snails. Frogs start life as eggs laid in the pond. After a few days, they hatch into tadpoles, little swimmers that look like fish. It takes two years for a tadpole to become a bullfrog. Frogs spend all their lives in or near the pond. They sit in the sun and catch insect, insects flying by, or they dive into the water to catch small fish. When winter covers the pond with ice, the frogs find a warm, dark place beneath the ground or deep in the pond. There they sleep until spring. Snakes live near the edge of the pond where the water is not deep. They eat tadpoles and frogs, salamanders, fish, and worms. Like frogs, snakes sleep through the winter. Fish of many different sizes and shapes live in the pond. 
The pumpkin seed sunfish is very colorful. It is blue, green, and orange. Near each eye, this fish has a bright red spot. There are many small fish in the pond. Little minnows dart here and there through the plants. The pickerel hides under the lily pad, waiting for a small fish to swim by. The pickerel is hard to see in the water. It's green and golden brown. It looks like the plants around it. A minnow glides by, and the large fish darts forward and catches it with its sharp teeth. Does anyone know what bird this is? Guys, it's very common down there at the wetland areas or the ponds. Many birds come to the pond. This red-winged blackbird builds a nest around the cattails in the pond or on a bush nearby. It lays three or four eggs in the nest. In two weeks, the eggs hatch. Mother and father blackbird feed the baby birds insects from the pond. The little marsh wren and the great blue heron stop at the pond when they fly south in the autumn. They visit again on their way north in the spring. And this is the marsh wren and the great blue heron. Okay. This one here. How did the world of this pond begin? It all began as, this, as the work of one animal, the beaver. Here, I'm gonna turn real quick just to show the one full size picture of the beaver. Okay, beavers make ponds. They do this by building a dam across the stream. The beaver cuts down stream trees with its strong teeth. Then it drags the logs into the water and builds its house with them. The dam holds back the water of the stream and it collects. Finally, a pond is born. You can see the beaver here building right here. Like the beaver, the muskrat builds a house under the water. The house is made of mud, reeds, and cattails. The muskrat, a fine swimmer, uses its partly webbed feet like paddles. Very similar to a beaver. Notice the difference in the tail. This is the muskrat tail, very long and skinny. Whereas the beaver tail, everyone knows, is really wide and flat. Okay, don't get the words. Spring and summer are times of great activity at the pond. When cold weather comes, life slows down. The green plants at the pond's edge turn brown and die. Birds fly away to warmer places. Some animals go to sleep in their homes under the water. The fish swim slowly all winter long. But spring will come again, bringing warm weather. Once more, the pond becomes a busy place. The birds return, the animals come out of their winter sleeping places, and the plants are green again. Nature has awakened the pond, and it is bursting with life. The end. Great, I hope you guys enjoyed that reading. Sorry about the um, having to hold it up like that, kind of odd, but... Um, I, I do plan to have um, a few lesson plans for, uh, for various age groups um, following this. So um, probably later this week, they will be um, posted on our website. And um, make sure you uh, follow us here on Instagram or even uh, Twitter and Facebook. We're all at Tapteal Greenway. And you can connect with us there. I will share the link once I have um, the those activities ready and i greatly appreciate you guys joining us today thanks so much and remember to join us here every week uh 10 o'clock 
hashtag tap till Tuesday. We'll do um, different events each week. So thanks so much for joining and have a great day.